We continue our journey on a path of a software developer career with a question on how to get it more effectively, get from zero to unlimited income or almost unlimited income. And this is a video two in a three-part series. So if you haven't watched the first one, the link will be in the description. Today we're talking about phase two of that career ladder. And this is mid-level developer or from money point of view, I've called it from first income to stable income, which means by the end of this phase of the journey, you will have stable job or stable set of freelance clients, and you will feel pretty safe about your career and about your income. So how to achieve that starting point being the first income, the first successful project. And I found a few job descriptions for mid-level developer, Laravel or similar. And as I mentioned in a previous video, I like to do it in a practical way. So instead of learning the theory, Let's see what's on the market, what the market demands, and then reverse engineer what technology do we need to adapt or learn or be familiar with. So first job description is this. It's not Laravel, it's Symfony, but it's pretty similar. I mean, any framework. So first thing, at least three years of commercial development experience. By commercial, it means probably a job somewhere, full-time position, or three years of freelancing with real projects. So project for yourself, your side projects doesn't really count. So if you count the years of experience, you can count one or two years of internship before junior, and then three years of commercial experience, and you could call yourself mid-level developer at around four to five years since the beginning. And let's see what technologies are listed here. And I will remind you for junior developers, basic technologies were some language and framework on top of that. So PHP and Laravel. Let's see what mid-level has. Here's Nginx. It means that you need to be familiar with deployment, server configuration, both locally staging environments and live server. Then Node.js and Postgres, probably it's applicable for this particular project, but that's another two new things which you would need to adapt. Node.js is on the backend and Postgres is another database system on top of MySQL. If you have learned MySQL as the first database system, then Redis for storage management, and Gitflow is a new thing, which is a way to apply Git knowledge with specific tool Gitflow. Let's take a look at another one. Mid-level developer, also in UK, and they have web applications, which are on some legacy code, which is Laravel 5, PHP 5.6. But the goal of that company is to upgrade everything to PHP newer version, Laravel newest, Angular as well. And keep in mind there are two frameworks here, so Angular and Vue.js. It's not either or, so you need to be comfortable with both. And then similar to the previous job description, we have deployment stuff, AWS serverless technologies which is in itself a huge world of new things to learn, to adapt and to implement. So anything related to deployment now becomes your responsibility as a mid-level developer. Laravel Vapor is a tool related to that, to AWS serverless and Algolia Search is related to big data. So for mid-level developers, my observation is they are starting to work with more serious projects, which require servers require working with big data, with caching mechanism, with storage mechanism like Redis. So you need to learn quite a few technologies on top. And if we take a look at another example, mid to senior PHP Laravel developer, so that's even a bit higher. But the list of technologies isn't that different. Laravel, Angular, Postgres, Redis, Mongo, Instead of Gitflow, you have GitLab, so you need to be able probably to configure GitLab. Then the same thing as I mentioned, hosted, so ability to work with Google Cloud and DigitalOcean, and also GitLab CI, which is continuous integration for unit testing. So basically, as a mid-level developer, you get more responsibility. So the project would be stable, tested with a configured server, properly deployed with all the processes around it. The goal of that phase of developer career is stable income, but the word stable is applicable even here. So your goal now is to deliver stable, bigger projects. And as they say, with more money comes more responsibility. So this phase is all about that, about responsibility, but then stability for your income. With that, you will probably learn new technologies, but also get more practice with existing ones. 
So on your journey from junior to mid-level, you need to create many projects. Practice, practice, and practice. Try some freelance work. Try to change the jobs or within the same company, try to work on different projects. So the worst thing that you can do as a junior developer, junior to mid, is to stay on the same project for five years and then think to yourself that you are already a mid-level developer while working on one project for five years, just because of five years, you are a mid-level. Nope, that's not how it works. The list of requirements for mid-level developer is quite a variety of technologies, so you need to try a lot of things. And also with that, you become more efficient in writing code. So you will deliver code faster, you will debug faster, so you will already have learned a few lessons on what to do in which situation, how to Google more effectively, how to stack overflow, how to read forums, and how not to copy-paste the solutions but think a little deeper. So efficiency is another thing to describe the junior to mid-level path. And with that, whatever you practice, please put that in public. Of course, if it's not under NDA or some restrictions, but try to build your portfolio, whether it's your personal website, your GitHub account, your set of scripts that you sell on Code Canyon or Theme Forest or whatever. You can also start blogging, start tweeting, start being more public about what you do. Because the goal is whenever you change the job into mid-level position or try to apply for more serious freelance projects, your clients or your employers should see what you have done in the last couple of years. And if it's not public, you will have trouble. And final thought about this phase of the career is when do you feel that you are a mid-level developer and not junior anymore? I really love the analogy of giving advice. So the more advice you give, the more senior you become. So the ratio of advice you ask and advice you give should be level up by this point. The amount of things that you Google and that are new for you should be pretty much on the same level as the amount of advice you give to other developers, both in your company or on forums or on Stack Overflow or wherever. So mid-developers are confident enough to give advice as well as ask for it. In the next and final video of the series, we will talk about seniority, how to become a senior developer. And not only that, how to make it so that everyone will be hunting you as a developer, so you would be able to almost name your salary or what opportunities you have on top of development. So should you start your own business, your own agency, your own startup? And what if you get up to the top in your company? What is the next step? How can you evolve? So thoughts around that in the next video.